Greetings all, here we go. We're gonna talk about some basic learning phenomena. Forward. So, not such a blank slate. Um, <clears throat> when you think about John Locke and the empiricists, uh, the British empiricists, they argued that all behavior was a blank slate, right? There, you're a blank slate, and then everything that you have is kind of written onto that. Um, well, that's not quite the case, because first off, we're not without limits, right? Uh, your baby, there, there's, <laughs> There's a finite limit as to what you can do. You know, for example, I'm not going to be able to learn to hold my breath for 25 minutes. Now, I'm a human, and I can learn how to use scuba equipment. I suppose I could even learn to invent better scuba equipment. But generally speaking, our behavior is not without limits. <clears throat> That's not entirely fixed either. In other words, we can modify things, right? Lots of different things. We can even modify reflexes. We can arrange for contingencies to modify our own behavior. We can modify other people's, beh people's behavior. And we'll, we'll talk about all this stuff as we go. Um, and to put it in the context of today, in a sense, that we, we have a firmware, all right? Um, that means that your program, your brain, is wired to accept stuff, right? So it's wired to accept experiences, it's wired to connect those experiences, link them together, right? Uh, and then, and, and that's that process uh, that, that, that in the past, British associationists, or British empiricists were also associationists. They talked about that association process. Now, we could get into the philosophy of why that associationism is not the right term, uh, but on the surface, it's an okay term. You dig into it a little bit, it, it gets to be problematic. But um, we as humans tend to form associations between event A and event B. We can link those up together. Um, <clears throat> but it's not an active process. It just, it's not something you decide to do. This happens without your knowledge. It happens deeper in the brain. Uh, than, you're conscious, than, than, than you're aware of, so to speak. So it's just happening quickly, um, and, and that's okay. That's a good thing, um, and it keeps you alive. And we'll talk a little bit about why that keeps you alive later. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, much like this hand-carved rooster, right? Um, it, it, the firmware there is that it had to be a particular shape, right? It, 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 <laughs> that, that branch before it was carved was... A branch, right? But without that particular shape, you wouldn't have that particular branch. You wouldn't be able to get that hand carved rooster out of it. Um, it's a cool little thing. It's kind of fun. They only take about 15 minutes to do. They're really cute. Uh, anyway, uh, so think of your brain as, in a sense, that uh, that, that branch, right? It's it, it's put together in a particular way. Then you can do stuff with that particular thing, right? Um, in this case, we took a branch, turned it into a rooster. I didn't do it. I got the picture on the internet somewhere. So, anyway. Elicited behavior. Whoa, sorry. Elicited behavior. Elicited behavior is behavior that's pulled out of you, right? So it's elicited, right? Your reaction is elicited, right? Not illicit, as in illegal, illegal, not illegal behavior, but elicited. Um, so it means a stimulus basically caused the behavior to happen, right? So in other words, what do you have in common with this cute little thing, which is a microscopic view of something? I forget now what that was a picture of it probably typed in paramecia and this funky picture came up. I don't even think it's an accurate picture, but it's, it's an artist's interpretation of one on a microscopic level. So anyway, uh, basically what you have in common with this thing is that it responds to its environment and it has reflexes and it can modify those free reflexes. In other words, it can learn and it learns in the same way that you learn in terms of modification of reflexes. Right? Um, so you can take a little blunt probe. Now this pen isn't very Blunt, but you get the idea. You get the blunt probe, and you can touch it, and it goes, ee, and it reacts. And you touch it, it goes, ee, it reacts. And then eventually, as, as the pen is coming at it, it goes, ee, before the pen comes at it. Right? So it, it can modify its behavior. Right? Um, is it actively doing it? Is it like their brain, they're going, oh, I need to be right? No. All right? <laughs> it just happens. And it's the same way with you, and the same way with me, and the same way with all the people on the wall and the pictures back there. All right, um, or any animal that may show up in the office. There's pictures of animals over here. So, anyway, <coughs> um, we all learn in that same basic fashion. Okay. So here's a little bit of a de better definition of elicited behavior. We've got uh, responses that are the result of stimuli right, in our environment. As you can see, the stimulus has the power. Right? So the stimulus pulls out the response in you, elicits. Right. So the stimulus happens. You go react to that. If you blow a puff of air into my eyes, I'm going to blink. Uh, if you shine a bright light in my bright light in my eyes, I'm gonna I'm gonna wince, right? I'm gonna look away. Okay, those are your reflexes, right? So reflexes qualify as elicited behavior, as you might imagine. The reflex, right? Eye blanks, withdrawal, right? Uh, the withdrawal symptoms that that may happen sometimes those are reflexes. Withdrawal, withdrawing from an object. I guess that's the term I was thinking about. So you touch something hot. Sorry, you can't really see that. You touch something hot. And woo! You, re you react. You know, your hand withdraws from that. Withdraws from that. So that is. Um, a, a, particular type of reflex. 
salivation with the cute little baby. Of course, um, um, that's not my baby. Picture from the internet. Um, anyway, um, you can see the salivation happening. I don't know if it comes through really well in the video, but she drew a happy baby just drooling away, right? Uh, and that's a type of reflex. If I present a, a food odor to you, or even I give you a visual of food, ooh, I could do it right now. I've got some great food in here. Now, do not pick on me for my eating habits. They're horrific, I understand, but they're highly reinforcing. Pringles. Some of you, at this point, I'm gonna get even closer. Pringles, right? <laughs> Some of you at this point are salivating. Some of you are puking, but I, my guess is most of you are salivating. And I have one thing to add to this. If you put caviar on Pringles, you will be surprised how good it is, and don't ask how I know that. Actually, you can ask. I might not answer. It has to do with Afghanistan and the fact that we didn't have any good chips. We had Pringles. <laughs> And we had caviar anyway, and alcohol. <laughs> we'll deal with all that stuff later. 